What is up YouTube and welcome to this Doctor Who video discussing last night's mind-bending episode and oh boy my mind was spinning more than the Doctor in the time stream. It was a Moffat-esque confusing episode but wrapped up neatly sorta kinda at the end. It ties into the end of last season and Doctor's mission of learning of her life in the Division as well as finding out what the hell the Flux is. Basically, the flux seemingly happened as we learned in Bell's story. It wasn't too clear, but well, the flux or whatever it is happened and the universe is proper wonky and some skulls want to mess up time as the doctor arrested them in the past. And there is some old lady who wants to actually, you know, end our universe looking like the architect from the Matrix or he who remains from Loki wrapped up all into one. So at the start, we know that time is messed as we follow Belle going around the universe trying to find her love who appears to be stuck in a Tamagotchi. But we found out at the end of the episode her love was actually Vinda. Yes, you may recognize him from Game of Thrones. She's trying to find him after the flux hit, but each of the Sontarans, Cybermen and Daleks have their own sector of space. And Carvanista wasn't kidding when he said that space isn't what it was. It's a mess with time particles killing people and, you know, Cybermen trying to, you know, control everything. I thought it was quite funny that the Cyberman was like, well, we want to control everything, even if it doesn't exist that much. At the end of last episode, the Doctor watched as Yaz and Vinda were about to be blasted with pure time. But here she makes a split second decision to go and save them by going into this time stream and sending each one of them into it and hiding them across time. They are spread over time as she tries to find each one of them and she's messing with many different time streams as she heads off to, you know, try and fix time while she is pranging out as well. Interestingly, she is spread across, but we get some cool moments in her scenes as we see her at the Siege of Atropos. But as we found out, she is actually in the past. She was Ruth, the fugitive doctor, and she's on a division mission to take out the Ravagers, who in the last episode have actually taken over Atropos. So it is kind of mirroring the past and the future. And while the others look like they are there, it is actually her division members, one of which we know is Carvanista, and there are other people there, but we don't know who they are just yet. We learn how the division, or Gallifrey, I'm not too sure exactly on that one, created the temple to control time, but to what end? The Doctor is also apparently to blame for Flux, and they use something called the Passenger from another dimension. Let's not forget that the Doctor herself, or himself, they self, is from another dimension as well, as this was a weapon they had used to against the Ravagers, and the Ravagers tried to use it against them. It's, yeah, it's very confusing. Now, this would have been key to her learning about her past, but she has been given a few things to go off. Mainly, she has been trying to hide each of her companions, and we learned the most about Vinda, as we learned he was a decorated person in, I presume, the, the military of his planet, and was assigned to someone who is a great power, the Great Serpent, who is a paranoid, nasty, horrible little man, and Vinda is to record his meetings, but this character is paranoid, and does the diplomatic version of turning off his body cam, as he wants certain people who have been hidden by the group who they are negotiating a peace deal with to be killed. And this led to Vinda reporting him, and Vinda was then sent far away on a mission because the Great Serpent is really powerful. So I really like that story. I really, the budget in this episode is just unreal. I was watching this in kind of, hate like, a big TV, and it just looked amazing. We also see Yaz as well, who is hidden but chased by angels. Essentially, this is pretty much setting up next week, which I think is kind of like the village of the angels or something, where this village is about to be disappeared or taken over by angels, and boy, it was that good at the end when it controlled the TARDIS. Now, Dan is also fragmented and has come across his crush, who was actually captured by the Ravagers and needs to be saved, which looks absolutely harrowing. He's also come across the Victorian dude, who seems to be a long-running mystery, as now he has a future gun, 
Last week, he was on Atropos, and before that, he was digging tunnels for whatever he is doing. Now, this week, he was in some tunnels, and he says, or hints, that they they aren't in Liverpool, which is an interesting one there. And I like this blending of different storylines, because we had the angels pop up in the previous episodes, and now they are having their episodes. The Sontarans popped up. They had their episode, and so on and so forth. So the, the the way this is written is very, very well done, if a bit confusing. If you are not sitting there and glued to the screen, you are going to get lost. The Doctor works out that, well, she is actually in the past on Atropos. They are at the siege of Atropos, and, well, yeah, she needs to work out what's going on, but she's taken back to her own time. She tried to recruit the Mori, and she used what she did in the past to actually, you know, do it in the future, so it worked. Now, she's actually taken by what I think was Orsok, a woman seemingly controlling everything by putting the Ravagers in the timeline as a poison to end the universe, but why? Now, we can see there are multiple different universes and realities around her. The time stream was uh, like a purple hue and we can see different ones like that and it looks like she's like a gardener tending to her garden there and it does look like she controls the multiverse which is pretty big because they've gone into that territory many many different times they've gone into it notably with the cybermen rose tyler where she ended up and there are some other kind of like multiple different expanded universe stories i'm not qualified to discuss but i'm sure if you search them on youtube you're going to find someone who probably knows a bit more than me but what is going on well we could finally learn the doctor's true origin and it even opens a convenient way for rose to return um maybe david tennant if the bbc truly are resetting everything when Russell T. Davis takes over the reins once more. The question is, who is this woman? Who is she? Well, she could be Tecton, or she could be a different Doctor, but whoever she is, she seemingly messed with some major forces in the past, the Doctor that is, as well, as, well, the Doctor returns and time is fixed, but it seems that time has been isolated onto a planet, and the Ravagers want to control and cause chaos with space and time crashing into each other. It seems time was chaotic until the Time Lords controlled it. Very, very much like the Loki TV show there. And that they wanted to control a narrative. That led them to be the Time Lords. And created their Time Lord rules and regulations so they can control it all. We have a lot of questions. As the time particles have been spread out, as time isn't quite fixed, and we don't know who the others with Ruth the Doctor are, and I expect some surprises. It could be interesting to see where this goes next, but I loved this episode. And next week, we've got an episode with the Angels, which I'm very excited for, and I need to put up my Christmas tree soon, and every year, I do put a weeping angel on the top. But that is it. I will see you soon. Have a good day, and goodbye.